Thank you for joining us for this week's Everything Under the Sun, the AccuWeather podcast. I'm your host, meteorologist Regina Miller. I'm joined in the studio by my producer, Andy Robb. And this week, I have our special guest, our hurricane expert, Dan Kutlowski, joining me in the studio as well, getting ready to talk about the 2019 hurricane forecast. Thanks for uh, coming in and sitting with us today, Dan. Uh, Thanks a lot, Regina. Always look forward to uh, telling people uh, what to expect for the upcoming hurricane season. Right. And I I would guess, Dan, especially after last year, Mm -hmm. people are like, please tell us that this year's hurricane forecast is not going to be as rough as last year. Yeah. Well, I mean, how the hurricane season unfolds is something we don't know. We We're going to give a forecast on numbers, but people have to remember that all it takes is just one storm to hit you. And it it doesn't have to be uh, uh, a Category 5 hurricane like we had with Michael. It can be a Category 1 or it could be a a tropical storm that just sits over you and causes flooding rainfall. So people, again, need to understand that... uh, uh, you know, there's going to be probably at least one or two impacts on the United States this year. And we're just hoping that they will be quick impacts and they will not be prolonged impacts like we had with, uh, especially with like we had with Florence. Right. You know, uh, hurricanes are like your kids. They're all different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different every, personalities. Every single one is going to be different. And with hurricanes, you know, uh, we were, you and I were speaking a little bit earlier on about like category hurricanes and and a lot of times people will be like oh i survived a category one hurricane i can handle Mm -hmm. category one i survived a category two in this area where i live i can handle category two and they all can behave very differently exactly a category one uh, that you may have experienced a few years ago may not be the same category one that you're going to experience i mean uh the biggest the biggest um mistake people make is underestimating the impacts. And as we saw with Florence, where uh, I think Florence is a classic example of where people just underestimate how much water can cause a huge, uh, not only inconvenience, but cause your life. Uh, I'm sure that people who experienced the flooding from Florence, this was a life-changing situation. There are um, experiences that people have encountered that they will that they will always have in their memory. They will never forget this, and and hopefully we can use some of those people and some of those stories to help forewarn other people. Right, as you messaging, know, as messaging right. exactly. So, and that's our biggest concern is trying to get the message out there. Uh, that when when the local officials tell you that that there's a bad storm coming. And, and these, these officials understand what the extremes are as far as the water is concerned. So they already had a, it's amazing uh, the planning that's done uh, in the local government uh, area with respect to disasters. I mean, they know how bad it's going to be, but to articulate that and to get people to move in a certain way so that you're not going to have uh, you know, uh, massive traffic jams, or uh, you're going to have people that just won't won't leave. You know, and right. I I understand. Again, I own a home. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and and I understand if if I had to evacuate, that would be real really difficult for me. You know, mm-hmm. um, and it's 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 that way with everybody. But there comes a time where you've got to you've got to leave, and you've got to you've got to uh, prepare. And the one, th- if I don't, if you don't hear anything at all from me today. The one thing, one takeaway is please have a disaster plan. It's all, it's all about how to plan for those, those storm systems. And the reason why we see a disaster plan is you can use this plan for not only hurricanes, but for severe weather, such as tornadoes. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who live in a further northern latitudes, it could be for a blizzard. You know, how are you going to react in these situations? So I think... All of us should have a supply, uh, a tub, uh, one or two tubs of supplies that if you had to evacuate, you would be ready to go. You would just yeah, take just the tubs grab and, go. And, and grab and go. And mm-hmm. and maybe as as you're getting close to a situation, maybe there's some things that you want to throw in there, such as your insurance policy, uh, home ownership uh, credentials, because when there are disasters, sometimes people don't have those papers 
or the necessary credentials to get back into where they were. Their house may be destroyed or maybe totally underwater. And so um, Mm -hmm. there's going to be restrictions after a hurricane comes in. So uh, so again, uh, pay close attention to your local officials. Heed the warnings. But again, please have a disaster plan in place. Agreed. Agreed. Now, uh, tell me, before we get into this year's hurricane forecast, talk to me about lessons learned with the 2019 yeah. or 2018, excuse me, yeah. forecast. I think the two important lessons for Florence um, were the fact, I think for Florence, water is usually the most destructive part of a hurricane, no matter what the wind intensity I mean, we saw that with Florence. Didn't matter how strong. I know I know Florence hit as a Category 1. Category 1 has no meaning whatsoever. Because when a storm's out at sea, it's a Category 4 or 5, and then it weakens. The cloud mass does not weaken. The cloud mass gets bigger. And so the impacts of a storm, a weakening storm, can be just as disastrous as if it was hitting as a Category 4. Maybe except for the wind. Maybe you don't have the wind. But the water, the volume of water, which is being displaced by that hurricane, can be phenomenal. And we saw that with, with Florence. And uh, and I would think, if anything, uh, so, so if you have it as a Category 4 at sea and it weakens, if anything, it could be maybe a more of a problem in that it has now slowed down its pace of movement. And and, and, and where's the energy going? And you right. think about this, these these are energy machines. So when they when the wind when the when a hurricane slows down and weakens, it just expands. And that's what happened with Florence. So you had a huge area of of storm surge. Storm surge was recorded anywhere from from basically the Tidewater area, Norfolk, Virginia, all the way down to uh, almost Charleston, South Carolina. So you're talking about hundreds of miles of storm surge, uh, you know, that was affected. Now, the highest storm surge actually occurred uh, in the New Bern River area, uh, which was quite interesting because they had uh, eight to 10 foot a wall of water that made it that route that rose in that area. That's why the flooding was so bad in Newburn area. It's because the storm sur- the water was directed through Pamlico Sound into that area. Um, but 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 also the storm slowed down and caused phenomenal rainfall. So I think it's important for anyone living in a flood prone area to take ad- take the advice of the local officials on whether to evacuate or not. And this is way in advance. Uh, you you don't prepare for a storm like a day before you're gonna you may have to evacuate. You prepare for a storm now. You prepare for them now. And when the storm does start showing up on the weather maps, then you have to have a certain number of days. Okay, day day five out. Okay, what am I gonna do? Day four, what am I gonna do? Day three, what am I gonna do? And that that will all kind of come to play. The more prepared you are the much better you'll be able to handle these disasters in. Now, as far as Michael is concerned, the biggest thing about Michael was those preconceived ideas that people have on hurricanes. I survived a hurricane. Uh, when Michael first started getting its act together uh, near the Yucatan Peninsula, it was a tropical storm, intensified. And initially, two days out, we only thought this would be a Category 1 or 2, maybe a Category 3, maybe a major hurricane. And of course, as it turns out, uh, you know, Michael became a Category 5 just before it made landfall. And this is the worst, worst kind of intensification that can take place. The one thing take away from Michael is we still do not understand those storms like Michael uh, that intensify so rapidly. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they're just, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't uh, get that around our um, forecasting uh, models are just doing a, a, a not a very good job with that. So, so what we tell people, what we're telling people right now is, if you hear a Category Three is heading to the coast, pre- prepare, prepare for, for a, a five, cat- for a four or a five, yeah, exactly, right, exactly. Now, if we got a, a tropical storm and it's moving very fast, obviously it's not going to bring a lot of rain. But if you've got a tropical storm and it's crawling, and it might just get stuck along the coast, then you think, oh my gosh. 
we're going to have major flooding rainfall here. We're going to have, again, so use your common sense in this, but also, again, l listen very closely to the forecasting that's going on, and also listen to the local officials when they tell you that this could be a real big disaster. I think the biggest issue with, with the Michael was a lot of people, and I just learned about this over the last few weeks in talking, uh, in listening to some um, debriefing from the Hurricane Center, but there was... There was hundreds of people that did not evacuate from Michael until about 24 hours before the storm hit. And then it's a log jam of traffic. And, well, and, and fortunately, fortunately, that's not a huge that where, where Michael hit. It was, it's not a, a major city, but it was big enough that there's only two lane highways and people had to get out of harm's way. So the local officials was able to get people out of harm's way. But we still had hundreds of people that refused to leave uh, for whatever reason and some of those people, I forget the death toll. The death from Michael was was I think at least a dozen, somewhere between tw uh, twelve and twenty people died, and some of the people that died, they died because the hurricane just basically blew their house away, yeah. and the housing that was there was not built to standards that we now see. They were built to the 1960s standards. Most of them were bungalows built on slabs, mm -hmm. and nowadays. When you build a house, if you have a slab, you tie it down. You're nailing, you're, you're drilling these huge bolts into this concrete. And all the whole house is, is, is basically uh, structured so it's all tied into one another. So you have these strappings. You've got all kinds of things to hold that house together. So if you do get hit by strong winds, it's not just going to blow away. Now, you're still going to get damage. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you're, but, it, but nowadays, we understand how to build for, for a very strong hurricane now. So, so if you live in a, a, a house that's been, that was built before the, 19, uh, the late 1990s when, when a lot of um, codes, codes changed, went into change, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and your grandfather did, you say, oh, I didn't have to do this, I didn't have to do that. Your house is going to be very vulnerable to be hit, and, it, and, that, and this was the misconception that people had uh, in the uh, in the uh, Mexico Beach area near Panama City. Mm -hmm. They thought, "Oh, we ro we've rode we've rode out hurricanes before, so we could ride this one out." That didn't happen, and no. people were shocked at how much a Category Five can just blow things down. So those are the takeaways that we got. So tell me now, what is the forecast for? 2019 for hurricanes well again this year uh we believe that this year will be uh as far as putting it in perspective it'll be probably a, a near normal season as far as the numbers are concerned right now our forecast is for 12 to 14 uh, named storms of those 12 to 14 we're thinking five to seven will be hurricanes and of those five to seven hurricanes we believe two to four of those will be major hurricanes um, and, and major classification for major, those listening. Would category it would be a Category 3 hurricane or higher, roughly 115 miles an hour, about 113 miles an hour or higher. And as far as impacts, directly impacting the United States, right now we're forecasting two to four. Now, to put this in perspective, in a normal season, a normal season has 12 to 13 named storms, six to seven hurricanes. Major hurricanes are usually around three, sometimes four, and usually impacts in the United States. This includes both hurricanes and tropical storms is about three and a half. So again, our forecast is suggesting that this will be, uh, at least a number wise, it'll be very close to near, near normal then. Now, last year it was above normal. We had 15 storms, eight hurricanes, two major hurricanes, but those two major hurricanes hit the United States, of course, and in direct impacts were four. We actually had two other storms. We had Alberto and Gordon, which made landfall also in the Gulf of Mexico, um, but they were, again, they did not cause that much damage. They're more typical of the tropical weather that usually hits the United States. It's very rare for the United States to be hit by a major hurricane, let alone two major hurricanes, and one of those major hurricanes being a Category 5. But when you think about it, the last Category 5 hurricane that we had was back in 1992 with Hurricane Andrew. So Category 5 hurricanes don't occur that often. Right, Every 20, 30, 40 years. I mean, statistically, the odds of there being a Category 5 hitting the United States this year pretty small right now. It would be very small. Is it impossible? No, it's not impossible. It's just like when people look at 
Uh, they say, well, I have a the rain we see coming your way is the rain very typical of a 100-year flood. But people don't realize that when you have a 30-year mortgage, a 100-year flood means every year it's 1%. So during the course of a 30-year mortgage, the chance that if you pay off that mortgage, that same house, the chance of you being inflicted by massive uh, a massive flood is 30%. And 30%... You know, that's 30 a, years that's out. a pretty good risk. That's a pretty good right. probability. So people don't realize that when you're talking about a, a one, in, one in a hundred year flood, that's that's still the the odds of you being affected by that are pretty good within a few years, you know, because right. the probability increases the longer you live in that place you live. Okay. Well, thanks for uh, giving us the forecast for 2019. And we hope that the impacts for uh, folks will be low, but prepare for the worst. That's right. You can find the 2019 hurricane forecast also online at AccuWeather.com. Join us next week where we're going to be bringing in friend of the show, Dave Dombeck, once again, because we're going to be talking about the 1985 tornado outbreak. So we're going to have a little historical lesson coming up on next week's show. Right. Now, here's your AccuWeather ready. During hurricane season, preparation is extremely important. Striking images of utter destruction caused by Katrina, Irma, and other catastrophic hurricanes may lead some to believe that not much can be done to protect property from such a powerful storm. However, essential steps can be taken to minimize a hurricane's impact on your home. We've discussed preparations far in advance, like stocking needed supplies in a closet or area of your basement, which can be used as shelter in place. We've discussed preparations more closely in time of the storm in the event of evacuation, like reviewing evacuation routes and packing kits to take to off-site shelters. Here's some last minute things to consider when a storm is imminent. One, guard your windows. Entry points like doors and windows are the weakest and most vulnerable parts of your home during a major storm. Boarding up windows with storm shutters or plywood greatly reduces the likelihood of shattering. Plywood is fairly inexpensive and when installed properly, it can hold up just as well as traditional storm shutters against hurricane force winds. Two, protect property from flood damage. If you have sandbags, experts recommend piling up sandbags at least two feet high as an effective barricade against floodwaters. If you can't acquire sandbags, bags on short notice, fill a few heavy-duty garbage bags one-third of the way with water and place them side by side to supplement. 3. Secure loose objects. Outdoor objects surrounding your home can become deadly airborne missiles when swept up by a hurricane, potentially damaging you or your neighbor's properties. Pick up, tie down, put away, or secure anything that could become a projectile with high winds like potted plants, lawn furniture, children's toys, so that they don't get picked up by the wind. Trimming loose branches can be considered as well if time permits. 4. Prepare appliances for power outages. Consider unplugging all of your household electronics and appliances, as well as shutting off electricity in the house to prevent electrical surge or potential electrocution if your home were to be flooded. A lightning strike, short circuit, or a downed electrical pole can cause your home's power voltage to soar to hundreds or even thousands of volts and can do damage to expensive kitchen appliances. Surge protectors can be used leading up to any complete power loss. And five, double check your home inventory. Knowing exactly what items are in your home is critical to post-storm recovery in the event that your home or belongings have been damaged. Record the item number or serial number of the item when possible. Take photos of contents of your rooms and store in your cell phone or a thumb drive. Some insurers make the process easier by offering free home inventory apps. For more safety and preparedness tips, go to AccuWeather.com slash ready. For AccuWeather, I'm Holly Holdren. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to AccuWeather's Everything Under the Sun, giving you the stories behind the weather and so much more. New episodes every Thursday. Just search for AccuWeather on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or visit AccuWeather.com slash podcasts.